This is Carl at National RV Detroit walking you through this 2021 Zinger model 331BH. Okay. So, uh, back over here on the side, you can see you've got power stabilizers. Um, these power stabilizers, uh, you have one switch controls both rear, and then another switch up front controls both front. Now, this hole right here, you can see it goes to the frame. I don't know if you can see it or not, but but there's um, a shaft with a pin through it. Okay, so you can take a crank and put it on there, and you can actually crank the slide room in and out, the one that's on the other side. So that's what that's for. It's a way to get you out of trouble if you absolutely uh, need to, if you have a failure or an accident or something. And also, the same crank can be used right here on the stabilizer jacks on the off-door side. You've got the same shaft with a pin going through it, so you can crank those manually also if you need to. Um, and then you can see on the off-door side here, I don't know if you can see over here, but there's one more which allows you to crank the slide room on the other side. So um, it's just a way to get you out of trouble if, if, if need be. Also, there's going to be another small crank inside the trailer. And if you, this is the power tongue jack here. If you pull this plug off the top, you can stick it on there and crank this manually too to get yourself out of trouble. So there's a way to deal with everything. Okay, so let me move towards the back again and pick up. Now, this cooktop slides right out, okay? Now, there's a, a hose for it that connects from the cooktop to this quick connect fitting right here for LP. So you can hook to the LP system right there at that point with this quick connect. So keep in mind you have to plug that in to do it. Um, you've got a dorm refrigerator and running water. So uh, the, the refrigerator itself works on 110 AC and uh, as soon as you plug in your trailer it, it turns it on. So, okay. All right, so uh, just so while we're standing here, this is, um, this is the black tank flush. So after you dump your black tank, you can actually hook the hose from the dump station right up to here and turn it, the water on and it'll spray out the inside of the tank and clean off the sensors really well, okay? Um, this is the vent for the range hood. Now if you're gonna vent, there's a little, a little latch on each side. You move the latch so this baffle flaps freely. And so when you're venting, you want the baffle flapping freely, otherwise you wanna keep it uh, locked uh, when you're traveling or in storage. There's another hole for the slide out on the other side. Okay. Uh, let's see here. You have a power awning, of course, and then you have TV signal out and uh, power there. Your um, your uh, stairs obviously fold out of the trailer. Um, keep in mind that that the uh, legs are are um, are adjustable. You just remove the pin here, there's one on each side, and you can adjust the length of the legs to, to match the terrain you're on, so, okay. And of course, there's the switch for the front jacks. This right here is your hitch. It's a Husky center line weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. So, um, keep in mind that uh, we'll show you how that works when you come to pick up the trailer, okay. Um, this is the crank. You use to crank those things. You can see there's a, there's a, a channel cut through it, a slot. So it, it basically fits onto that shaft and then the, the cross pin that goes through the shaft goes right in these cutouts right here. So, okay. And also, I'll, I'll show you from the other side, but you can see there's a crank down there, the small one for the tongue jack, and then your, your dump hose is right there. All right, so you have power tongue jack. You have two LP tanks that are full. You've got a deep cycle marine battery with a kill switch. So you can shut the battery off right there if you need to. It disconnects it from the coach. So when you put it into a, a storage, you can just disconnect the battery and therefore Phantom Power uh, does not draw the battery down as quick. But anytime you're, you're using it, you're traveling, you're plugged in, you always want the battery turned on so it charges. Okay. So this is just the crank that I told you about right here. This is a reducer to reduce down to a plug so you can plug it in at home. Okay. So, uh, let's start over here. These are your dump valves right here. 
that's uh, black and then gray on the right. The black is toilet water and waste, of course, and the gray is sink and shower water. So you dump the black first, because it's the dirtiest of the water. Then you dump the gray to clean it out. You leave your black valve open and you can use that tank flush on the other side of the trailer that we talked about. Okay. Um, the, let me, let me re restate this in a better way. The, the one in the back, the flush on the, 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 the tank flush hookup on the other side of the trailer is for the bathroom that's uh, on the door side of the trailer by the rear. There's a small bathroom there. And then this one here, this is another black tank flush, is for the main tank, for the main bathroom. Okay, so there are two black tanks and two flushes. Okay, um, this is city water hookup. So this is where you'll, you'll get, uh, nine times out of ten, you'll get your water right from there. You hook it up and turn it on, you're all set. If you're traveling to a, a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites, you can uh, pre-fill your tank right here, your fresh water tank, and use the onboard pump to pump the water. Okay, now this is your water heater on the outside. The switches to control it are inside. I just want to show you that this is where you drain it from, this cap right here. That's an inch and a sixteenth socket, six point socket, will fit on there. Um, the switches are inside, it works on gas or electric, okay, I just want to show you that's where it drains from. All right, now, let me get past this thing spraying here. These are the, the rear dump valves, so you have a black valve here for that small bathroom, and this gray here, which is for the bathroom sink, and the exterior um, exterior kitchen sink on the other side so that's what this is for you always dump the black first because it's toilet water and waste then dump the gray to sort of clean it out and I showed you that the the flush for this is on the other side of the trailer for this particular one okay okay all right so you got a 30 um, foot 30 amp cord that just pulls out of here it stores right inside I showed you the adapter to adapt it down so you can plug it at home if you need to just keep in mind you can't run the air conditioners on 15 amp service so they'll eventually pop a circuit breaker this is cable and satellite through to the to entertainment area this housing here tells us that we're pre-wired for a backup camera so you can always put one of those on there also we're looking up I want to remind you that the manufacturer states that you should check the roof every 90 days so you go up there, have somebody go up there, you can walk up there, no problem. You look at all the sealant, make sure there's no cracking or separation. Make sure that, um, you know, there's no damage to any vent covers or roofing material by low branches, that sort of thing. Just give it a good inspection. If you see any issues, have it taken care of immediately. Okay? All right. So this is, this is uh, the, the second bathroom that I told you about right here. So the, uh, the, this flush over here is for this toilet right here, the black tank for this toilet. Okay? The gray tank back here is for this um, sink right here and then this sink right here. Okay. So let's move inside. Okay, before we go in, the first thing you see is this device right here. This is a power converter. It converts uh, 120, 110, 120 AC down to or over to 12 volt DC. So you got regular uh, AC circuit breakers here like you'd see at home and they're labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. And uh, you see these 12 volt fuses here, they're all labeled. These two 40s are the masters. They protect the whole side. So if you have a wild power surge or something or a lightning strike and your, uh, your um, 12 volt side goes out um, always check these two fuses here because that's what they're for is to protect the whole side okay um, it's good to keep a couple extra 40s and then some 15s just just to have you know also if these these, these will light up if they blow these here these two will not but these will and uh, you'll see them glowing through this tinted plastic here so you know you blew a fuse um, also when you're plugged in this is a battery tender so it'll sense how much energy your battery up front needs and it'll always keep it charged up. It'll send uh, 10 amps if it needs it. It'll just trickle a couple if it's if they're if it's full. So or charged, I should say. So it'll always uh, make the decision how much uh, energy to send up to it. Okay. All right. Well, let me look around here for a second. See what we've got. Okay. This is your control panel right here. The water pump I told you about is right here. 
Now that's used to pump water out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water. And it's also used when you winterize the trailer. Uh, to light the water heater on gas is right there. To light it or to turn on the electric, it's right there. Never run these without water in the water heater tank. Always make sure you have water in the tank. The lights are here. Um, your awning, your power awning is right here. Um, you can see it go right there, in and out. Never leave it out unattended. You always want to, uh, if you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in so it doesn't get damaged by the weather. You got your three slide rooms here. Uh, your battery's charged. Fresh water's got a third in it. We're still testing it. Black number, number one is empty. Gray number one is empty. Uh, and gray two is, uh, is empty. I'm not sure if this is black tank number two or not. Let me look back here real quick and I'll tell you. Sometimes they'll put another little panel back here. Sometimes they use um, the auxiliary on there, which I think they've done this time. So, yeah. Okay, so we're going to call the auxiliary one black tank number two, which would be for that small little bathroom in the back. Okay, so that's right there. Okay, so you figure when they fill up in one third increments, once it gets past two thirds, you got to start thinking about dumping the gray and black tanks when they get that full. Okay, all right. Now this switch here, you cannot run the fire, the fireplace and the air conditioning at the same time. It draws too many amps, so you have to select between one or the other. Right now it's on air conditioning, obviously, because it's warm out. But you just flip it like that. That's all you do. Uh, this is your thermostat. It's just an analog thermostat. The fan should always be on auto like it is right there. Heat is one click to the right. The fan is a click to the left. Fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. Of course, cool, which is two clicks over. That's your air conditioner. All right. Like so. Okay. You probably hear it kick on there. All right, so let me look around here, see what's next. Um, let me just look around. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, so this device down here is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It, does, it detects both. So if it goes off, take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, and figure out what's going on. Also, if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So I'm going to run it through the self-test. LP, carbon dioxide coming up. And then low battery alert. And back to green. It's always should be green like that. If not, you get it serviced, okay? Um, this is a GFCI. There's probably two in this trailer. Keep in mind, all the plugs are wired to a GFCI, even the one outside. So if it, you're using the one outside and it pops, you know, for whatever reason, you reset it in here. Okay, your microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood here. I told you about the vent outside opening the baffle. You use the fan, right? Light. So keep that in mind. You always want to open that up when you're venting. Shut it when you're traveling or storing. All right, so the... the range this is the sparker here you turn it clockwise to spark it okay you got three burners and three knobs and then this one far to the far right is for the oven so I'm not sure if he's got the gas on right now or not let me see go to high spark it yeah so there you go it's that simple the oven is a little different at the very bottom in the back is a pilot light a spark so you can see it sparking back there right um, what you do is you go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot light, and you depress it. You keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure, okay? Then you're going to come down here, or you're going to look down here, and you're going to spark it with the other hand right here by turning that clockwise. After the pilot light lights, you still hold this in for another 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so, until it heats up. Then you go to operating temperature. Um, when you shut it off, the flame goes out, obviously, but so does the uh, uh, pilot light. So you got to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. And this is a... Uh, Always have this closed position when you're traveling so it doesn't break. Your refrigerator is a very simple refrigerator. It's, it's a 12 volt DC refrigerator. So it runs on 12 volts. So when you're pulling down the road, your battery will run this refrigerator and your battery will be, will be being charged by your tow vehicle's alternator. Once you get to the campsite and plug in, your power converter will be sending the 12 volts to it to keep it going. Okay. Um, it's very simple on and off, temperature, and there's uh, power saving modes. That's all there is to it. It's very simple. Okay. Um, 
Now these devices have um, have remotes. There's your fireplace remote there. I've got the air conditioner going so I can't turn on the fireplace, but there are controls for it right here. And basically you can that you can set the fan speed. Uh, it works as a space heater, so you have low, off, low, and high. Then you have temperature, uh, thermostat. You also have you also can adjust the flame, you know, just the appearance of the flame. And you also can use a timer. It's got a built-in timer, so you could you could time it, set the timer to turn on, you know, 20 minutes before you get up in the morning, for example, if you want to. Okay. This also has a remote right here. This is your sound bar. It um, has two speaker zones. A is inside the trailer. B is outside the trailer. You got a USB here. It has Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or tablet. Um, and it's got an FM radio. And of course, that's where your TV would go if you if you choose to um, have one. And it hooks up right here. Okay. All right. So let's see here. What is this? This is a jackknife sofa, so jackknife flat to turn into a bed. You can drop the table type on the dinette onto these cleats here, right? And uh, then use that as a platform and use the curtains to fill in the space, okay? Let me look around before I leave this room and make sure I got everything here. Uh, looks good. So, um, this is your bunk room, obviously. It has one slide out. Um, this, this bed here folds up. You can see the latch plates here where you, where you lock it into place so you can put it up and sit here or you can have it down like this and you can jackknife this or actually this this rolls over forward so this turns into a bed also this if you put it down as a bed and then you've got a third one right here and of course all your TV hookup and everything right there um, a thing to keep in mind is that uh, you can escape from this trailer through this this uh, exit window you would push this all the way through all the way through and then you grab a hold of this tab and pull the screen out and then you can exit that way if you have to in an emergency okay let me look around here okay good now um, the thing to remember that about the, the the sink works the same as any other sink um, the thing that's different than a household toilet um, why this is different than a household toilet is because um, it has a black tank directly below it. The black tank can't be empty when you start using it. This applies to the one up front too, so I'll just tell you while I'm standing here. This is your flush pedal, right? So what you do is you hook up at the campsite, you, you hook up your power and your water, you'll come in here with chemical, toilet chemical, you dump one dose right in the bowl. Then you'll step on the flush pedal, water will come swirling out like it is, but it'll be strong because we're, we're, we're not hooked up right now, that's just residual pressure. But directly below is the black tank, so you're going to let a wa uh, about a gallon of water go into the black tank along with the chemical. Um, some people use more than a gallon. It's, it's up to you. But you have to have some water in it and chemical when you start use before you start using it. Otherwise, the smell will be terrible. Plus, it can get clogged up. Um, so you always got to put a uh, chemical in some water in the toilet before you start using it. If you don't do it, you'll only not do it once. Let me, let me tell you. Okay. So here's the master um, bathroom here, another GFCI, um, obviously your sink and shower. Always run, this has got a fan, always run the fan with the shower to pull the humidity out because uh, these things are built really tight and you don't want it to build up in here, you want to vent it. Okay, and this toilet's the same as the other one, it's got a flush pedal down here. So let's say you were, you're camping and you're going to stay one more week at the campground, but you have to dump your black tank. So you dump your black tank. Then you would repeat the procedure I just told you about. You'd put a, your chemical in here, then you step on the pedal, water will come swirling out and put about a gallon or so in the black tank, and you're all set. Never use them dry. All right. The, um, the bed comes up in their storage underneath, of course. That's another emergency escape window. Works just like the other one. You, you have a backing plate here for a, a TV bracket, and there's your hookups right there. So you can put a TV in here to watch when you're uh, laying in bed. Uh, and, of course, a sliding door. So, okay. All right, so I think that about covers it. I'm just going to look around real quick, make sure I didn't forget anything. Went over all the, the main details here. So, okay, that's good. So I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And I want to remind you what I said earlier about about inspecting the roof every 90 days. That's very important to do. Also, make sure you winterize it before it freezes in the late fall, early winter, okay? Thank you very much.